I put the hyperlink to um, to my media channels, social media channels. So if you do have like you know questions, and would like to get more understanding on what I'm going to show, then uh, in my YouTube channel you can find all these demos that where where I'm describing really in a detailed way, like what I'm showcasing. So if you go to aka.ms/poshetech, you can find my YouTube there. All right, so the first scenario that I wanted to show is about Microsoft Teams and Adaptive Cards. Like we have a bunch of actions we can use already. All of them are actually in a preview, but don't worry, they are, they are working quite stable today. So my idea was that we already have this new feature called approvals, so that you can create a new approval straight from the conversation in Microsoft Teams. But I just wanted to make it you know, more fancy and to stay all about or all within the same conversation. So like, let's say that uh, me as, a, as an employee, I just have files, new, new version of files for approval. So I'll say these are new versions of PDD, so this process design documents for review or maybe approval. And then I'll just drag and drop them to this conversation. Yeah, replace because they possibly are somewhere already uh, added as I was testing this before, and then I'll simply send this uh, message to the chat. And now what I could do, thanks to a fancy cool trigger that we have in Power, in Power Automate, it's called for selected message. I was able to create my own flow here that is called request for approval. And then this flow actually displays an adaptive card that I can as well author. So um, I will now use Adele Vance as an approver uh, review and approve. So what this flow, I'll just show you in a moment, is doing is grabbing all the details about this message, its attachments, uh, about the author, approver, assignee, whatever, and it's just doing a lot of magic. So first thing it does is displaying this information that, to me as an author, mentioning me, that this message with its, with its attachments has been now sent for approval. And now once I switch to uh, Adele Vance, I think that's her. Yep, yeah, that's Adele. Then she in her chat window should already have, uh, has, uh, she has already this message from Flowbot with again, an adaptive card with a lot of information. Sorry for that, uh, I had to escape it, but maybe I just escaped it too much. Nevertheless, uh, this is required because if this wasn't escaped and there were quotes, then this would simply make this card invalid and don't display it. Nevertheless, that's the card with all the details. So there is information about, hey, Adele, please approve it. Information about who is requesting. I can as well go and see this message. So you can see this fancy highlighted with yellow. So I'm sure that this is the one that we are talking about. Uh, furthermore, what I also have are the details about the message. So uh, who is the author of the message when it was posted, all the details about the message, I mean, it's, it's contents, plus links to attachments. So I can click and open the attachments. Um, they should now open in, okay, I don't want to open these files, but nevertheless, I could open them. So I could review the attachments. And in the end, I can say approve or reject. And done. So right now, once I click the approve, this card is going to be replaced with like say confirmation one. It's, it doesn't look anymore that fancy, but at least it shows uh, information to the approver that, hey, your task has been completed. And furthermore, here under this uh, message, which was sent for approval, there is uh, information that it has been approved and the comments and who approved it and so on. So this was like a very easy way to enhance the approvals. Moreover, everything or all the information is kept within the same conversation. So uh, like everything happens right, right here. And now what happened actually, uh, maybe I'll just go to edit to this flow in SharePoint, like for a selected file, for a selected item. So this trigger actually is following this new approach that soon should be implemented for to any adaptive card related mass uh, action in Power Automate because it already has the designer built in. So you don't have to navigate this author discard just straight here, save it and it's done. So this is the designer for the trigger. And then there is a lot of things happening. Uh, so first the workflow is getting this uh, message which was actually sent for approval. 
and then it's getting those mentions for approval, request, uh, and author of the message. And then actually, first is posting this reply, informing that the message is going to be now under review, under approval. And uh, well, this is also how I'm building the attachments list. So because the attachments is always an array, therefore I had to use this uh, select statement or select action to just create a piece of adaptive card. Nevertheless, in the end, this is the whole adaptive card. So you can see that this action, it doesn't contain this button to author adaptive card just within the designer, but I had to design it outside. So in the adaptive cards.al slash designer. So this is where I actually build it and then copy and paste is JSON. And then I enhanced it with all these dynamic outcomes from previous actions. So that's quite a lot of work you have to do, but your results are really satisfying. And uh, this action is called post an adaptive card to a team's user and wait for the response. Now this is a quite, I mean, it's not a very new action. It has, I think already like half a year or even more than half a year since been asked with this uh, for, for I don't know, several months already. Um, nevertheless, it's uh, the highest benefit, biggest benefit is that you can send this adaptive card and actually grab the response back from the user. Other actions that we have are not waiting, are just letting you to submit uh, or send the, the, the card to user or channel and that's it. Now this card, this action actually helps you and lets you to grab the response and then process this information. What is important is that even if you use this action to post to a channel, it will always wait for the first response and plus it will always wait only 30 days. So as the regular approvals, after 30 days, this action is going to be timed out and flow will simply fail. The other downside of this action is that we are not able to update this card that we are sending with any information that we can grab from the user. So we have to uh, create this information that is going to replace this confirmation message upfront. And there is yet today no way to somehow mix this information with what user is sending from the card. So like we couldn't, we cannot uh, display, hey Adele, thank you for your approval or thank you for a rejection based on what the outcome was that is not working. Now, another thing that is not working with these uh, actions in preview is that for some reason, you are still not able to actually find the dynamic outputs from the dynamic content from that action. So even though this action is sending me some information like the comment and the outcome, it is no way to find these outcomes here. You simply need to know how to build this string and just build it manually. If you don't know the content, uh, the outcomes, how they look like, you can simply put just one compose action and preview what the JSON from this action looks like and then use it. And then actually based on the outcome, I'm just sending another uh, information below that message that was sent for approval with either approved or rejected. And that's it. How do you like it so far? Good stuff. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Um, then the second thing that I wanted to show you is about the actual messages, which are even more powerful in my humble opinion. So to author the actual hey, message, Thomas, you need to go. Yep. Lu Llewellyn was actually asking a question. Um, they'd like to know, is so there a revoking? mechanism to revoke the approval request? How, what's the process for actually revoking the approval? So what's, what's the no in that case? Well, no. Unfortunately, uh, once we send this adaptive card to a user or to a channel, there is no way we can update it. So possibly this is going to be you know, implemented one day that we would be able to send this confirmation message even if there is no action from the user because this is all based on the webhooks. So hopefully that should be somehow possible one day. But up today, as of today, uh, you're only able to send it and then actually count on that the user is going to answer or complete this this action this card and then well you can always uh, set this custom timeout for the action and then like for five days and if during these five days user will not answer then you can simply go into escalation mode the same as you could handle approvals in flow that are not approved or responded so actually if you have if you do assign an approval in Power Automate and it's not answered, it's not completed, then you are not, or you are as well not able to anyhow cancel this task. I mean, sorry, you can, but you are not able to approve instead of the other user and uh, like 
you know, uh, cancel the action to, to not wait anymore and so on. So and Lice from the Portland the User Group is asking asking a similar question. Is can you change the approve or reject button text to say something else like yes or no? Sure you can. So once you go into uh, the designer, where was that? Was it here? No. Ash. No, I have too many windows open, sorry. So um, when you have the buttons, you're always able to define these labels. Plus, if you have uh, the submit button, because what I was using, the, the, the OK button was actually this, this action submit one. So you can have the labels. However, what is important here are the IDs, because the ID actually is being sent back as the value that you can read. So the example contents that is being sent from the adaptive card is like that. So what, what you see here is uh, the information about the responder, so like who clicked, and then information from the adaptive card. So this is the ID of the button which was clicked. So if you have like 10 submit buttons, then you always have the ID of the one that was clicked, plus the information that is like connected to the submit button. So what was submitted you know, from the form. So this is actually what this wait for uh, send adaptive card to a team's user and wait for approval and wait for the response is given you back in Power Automate. Right. Now, the other thing are the actionable messages. So like, although they're built as well on top of adaptive cards, they're a bit different. There are very, very significant differences that you have to understand. First, you can design them not only using the adaptive cards at slash designer, but you can as well go to this AM designer on the Azure website. So you can just like grab the template and start from here. The designer looks a bit different, but it has its cool, cool features, cool benefits from using. So you can first see the preview, like how is going your actionable message look like in Outlook Mobile and in Outlook Desktop. Plus you can send it. So if you're signed in, you can send this message to your own uh, account and just see how it really going to look like in your inbox. So these are the benefits from using this designer, not uh, the adaptive cards.io. Now, the other thing that you have to do if you want to send actionable message is to go to outlookoffice.com, um, this developer dashboard, and you have to register this new provider. And then there are several scopes for, uh, for providers. So you can use this test provider and only define users to which you want to send the actionable message. You can define the provider on the organization level so that you will be able to send messages to anyone within your tenant, or you can as well wait for approval from Microsoft and register the provider to send messages to any tenant in Office 365 in the world. What is also important here is you need to define these target URLs, like where data from adaptive card that is being sent to Outlook is going to be sent then. So like in my case, you can as well use these regular expressions. So in my case, I'm using Power Automate to get data back from this actionable message and then process it and then respond. I'm just going to show you how it works. Nevertheless, uh, once you register this provider and then after the approval, you need to grab this provider ID and use it in the adaptive card contents. So um, let me just trigger an approval while we're uh, waiting for that UI, UI, Olivia was asking, can you programmatically register a new provider? I have no idea, to be honest. I mean, the point is that if you if you register the provider on the other level than uh, the test users, like organization or global, you need to have the approval. So like if you do register on the organization, it has to be your um, exchange admin who does approve. If global, then it has to be someone somewhere in Microsoft who will get the task for approval. But I don't know if you can do this programmatically, to be honest. I never okay. I never even checked that. So anyway, that is my flow that I want to now run. And I will use it to create a task, a regular Power Automate task. So I'll assign it to John Researcher. and now run it. Now I should have in a separate window, John Researcher's email. So with that, now John should receive this actionable message containing 
all the information that I just defined, plus the possibility to approve or reject. Now, if you have ever used uh, uh, regular tasks that you can use in Power Automate, then you know that actually they are also sending these kind of actionable messages where you can approve or reject. However, they, for example, don't allow you to reassign the approval to the other user directly from the uh, Outlook. So you have to go into action items in Power Automate portal, and there you can open the task and simply that way reassign. However, what I did here is like an enhanced version of this, of this card that is being sent. Okay, so uh, I didn't change the request, so this is still just a fixed person who is requesting. However, what I wanted to show you is that uh, this actionable message actually is showing information at input. So the task details, I mean, the title, uh, the, the, the description, and then user is able to actually approve, reject, or even reassign. So I am able here to pick one of the assignees. And uh, well, I could say approve. And this way, not only this task, this um, message is going to be replaced with the confirmation one, but in this case, I can actually create like a, a new card that is following, you know, the, the look and feel, the, the user experience of the previous one. So this is more consistent in Outlook as you can do this in Teams. So well, I have this confirmation, so I know that this card has been, this task has been approved. Uh, the outcome, uh, the, the comments. Now, once I go back to this flow, I should already see that it's not in running, but it's completed. Yes, it has succeeded. Now, how did I actually do that? Now, that's a bit more advanced scenario right now. So first, what I had uh, done was to create an approval, but not wait for the approval, just create. And also, I turned off these enable notifications because I didn't want the flow to send its own email. I wanted to send it on my own. Then I prepared this actionable message adaptive card code. And now here are the differences. So first I had to provide this originator ID here as the, as the GUID. Also, there is a set of differences here at the, at the bottom. So once I define the actions, which are this type HTTP, I'm able to define the URL. So where these contents from the card is going to be sent. And this is also the URL that you have to define when you are registering these providers. Then you're also able to provide to define the body, the headers. This is very important. If you don't define these, you will simply be not able to send this back to, for example, Power Automate, because it will be missing the crucial information like headers or contents. And so that is the content of this message. And now finally, I had to wrap it with this script code or tags and simply put it to send as an email. What I also did, I also posted this adaptive card to the same user via the Teams, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I wanted to focus on this actionable message in this scenario. And so then I was simply waiting for the approval. And now lastly, what is happening here is that once user clicks either approve or reject or reassign, the contents from that message is sent to this flow, which is actually triggered on the HTTP request action. And then just let it load. So this is uh, what it's what is triggering this flow. And then what is actually happening is I'm grabbing all this information from the CDS about the approval, about the user, and based on this outcome, so whether it was approved, rejected, or reassigned, I'm just triggering a different switch. So here, I'm also checking if the comment is filled in. If it's not filled in, I'm sending back information that, hey, this is a required to put in comments. Without that, you cannot simply submit it. However, if comment is provided, then I'm using the uh, extended custom connector for uh, approvals API that Daniel uh, Laskevitz has on his GitHub, and I'm simply approving this task. And then based on whether it went fine or not, I'm sending different information. So what I did here is uh, based, I mean, thanks to this uh, header card update in the body, I'm able to simply send a different adaptive card as the confirmation one. So that will replace the one you saw in the first place. And that is actually happening for all the other scenarios or steps as well. 
uh, even the rear sign is is using this custom control. However, it has its limitations uh, because it's working in the context of the user. But anyway, it's 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 fine. You can uh, always uh, you know work around it. I think that's it. So like I really went with lightning speed through these whole functionalities. I hope. Uh, at least I have inspired you to try your, you know, best with this. All right. So there's been a couple questions. Let's see if we go through them. Daniel Holiday, <laughs> awesome stuff. Any other questions that were not answered? Actually, one of the questions that I answered, I wasn't sure. Is there a blog post on the provider setup? I did include the link for all the posts. Um, yeah. So, so, so there is on my blog as well for actionable messages like what steps you have to to take to register the provider mm -hmm.